Hey, I'm on the edge of my seat here, back again with another brand new video. So today we will be no damaging all the boss fights in Yakuza 5. However, I have something to confess, the footage you are about to see is not recorded from the PC version of this game. Now, in some previous videos I said that I no damaged some of the other titles because I was waiting for 5 to drop on PC. And while I do own it, uh... I pl started playing Yakuza 5 before it actually dropped on PC because this game is absolutely massive. And another thing you might have noticed is that uh, I'm playing on new game actually. This is not a new game plus file, this is me starting from the very beginning of the game. And I did this for a couple reasons but I'll have to point out that my beginning strategy with these two numbnuts here is very simple. Pretty much just grab one while the other's distracted and kind of throw them and not no deal damage along the way and also get some heat actions in there because these guys are very troublesome for a, like a new game strat because I don't know you don't you're, you're kind of under leveled at this point you don't really have any good places to grind before reaching this point and one of these guys is copying Riki yeah, one of these guys is copying Kanda from like both from Yakuza 3 both very troublesome for someone who does not have that many abilities but you know I found a way to deal with it but still for a new game for like a new game I was thinking that this fight might actually be a little troublesome but I'm just glad I was able to get it out of the way because every fight after that at least for Kiryu you're able to grind a bit and actually get some of your more advanced tech abilities like for this uh, 2v1 here I was actually able to get the Komaki parry which served me very useful against Aizawa here so I don't know the big issue with these guys is that Okay, so like Morigana here, you can like combo him really easily. Aizawa not so much. However, if you're comboing Morigana, Aizawa tends to like kind of rush, bum rush you with a grab. And the thing about his grabs is that just like Yakuza 6, his grabs deal damage to you. Like, I don't know, normal enemy grabs don't deal damage, but for some reason Aizawa just has some special properties that deal damage to you. So you do not want to get grabbed by Aizawa. And plus, if you get grabbed by Aizawa, Morigana will just hit you while being grabbed. So there's that. So what I do is I kind of get close to Aizawa here because he he does that thing. Like that grab is very predictable and I pretty much just Komaki parry him every time he does it. So while he's stunned, I go for Morigana to do like a little combo here. Now you still want to be careful with Morigana because some of his combos can come out pretty fast. Now this is a little risky here. Like I mean I, my combo like slightly skirted away from his grab. And here we're going to enter a feel the heat moment because I got Morigana's health bar really low. I really like how this game handles the feel the heat moments. Like in Yakuza 2, it had the cool like rumbling effect, but then in 3 and 4, they kind of turned like these feel the heat moments as like kind of slideshow affairs, and I didn't really like that. Like, I don't know, they like they would pause like the image and it'd be kind of like a weird JPEG standing there while you mash the button. I don't know. It doesn't really get me hyped, but here there's like a it's like a slow mo effect. There's like little vibrations, there's like speed lines across the across the screen. That's another like effect I noticed in like Yakuza 5 is that uh. I don't know, whenever you do like a heat action on like speed lines appear like, ooh, like that. Speed, boom, bop, boom. I mean, I'm calling them speed lines, but like these little like white lines that pop up. I don't know, I think it's a neat visual effect. Like it's not, it's simple, but it's cool. It adds to the impact of the punch. So here we have our first like proper 1v1, and this is a guy whose moveset is going to get copied in a lot of other Yakuza games. However, when his moveset gets copied into other Yakuza games, he tends to be easier. Like, the dude who copies him in Zero is easier, uh, the dude who copies him in Judge Eyes is easier, and by Judge Eyes I mean Judgment, if you're a little confused by that. But here, he can be a little challenging. I mean, he's not too hard, and I'm gonna scrape the floor with him really quickly, but I don't know, he's tricky. Like, I mean, he has attacks which are really easy to Tiger Drop and, like, Kamaki Parry, but then he has other attacks which aren't that easy to predict. Anyways, oop, that was really easy to predict, so I was able to get a Tiger Drop there. And getting combos on him is a little hard, because he tends to dodge a lot. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to do something kind of similar to Yakuza 6 where I'm going to rely on my grab combos but this is a little more useful because these grab combos actually deal consistent damage instead of like uh, serving as a t t uh, tutorial, territorial like maneuver thing like it did in Yakuza 6. I don't know how to describe what I did in Yakuza 6 but anyways in this game they just deal damage and they also set up enemies on the ground for heat actions which is really cool. Now also Yakuza 5, one great thing about Yakuza 5 is the stomps. The reason the stomps are fantastic is I don't know, in like future games, if you stomp an enemy too much while they're getting up, like sometimes like the shield will pop up. But here, like I don't know, the trick for these stomps is that you wanna, you don't wanna be holding down R1. 
you you want to just be like in free movement just like press triangle because you'll do a stomp and while the enemy's getting up you do like a normal kick but both of them will deal damage so if you do like two stomps or three stomps like that stuff just keeps building and building now anyways here is a cute QT animation copied straight from Yakuza 3 uh ta i forgot tamashiro i think that's the guy's name in yakuza 3 but that that animation was copied completely wholesale from yakuza 3 which is pretty crazy oh no i forgot to mention that this boss fight uh, like well i don't know his first fight like that last qd he does where you beat him up and like do a little uppercut that was copied into yakuza 0 for the rush style i don't know i think it's pretty cool when like some of these boss fight qts get reused in like your heat action on it makes you feel like a boss anyways here is the hardest fight in the game wow so here, the Tojo Clan. This fight is absolutely insane. This is like on a scale that the Yakuza series has not seen like ever. Like look at how many dudes are showing up to get beat up. Like what, 10s, 20s? Like, oh my goodness. Like, I mean, Yakuza 2, when you had, I mean, Yakuza 3, when you had a fight like this, they limited it to like a room of five and then you had like a bunch of like weird sprites in the background to like represent more guys like spawning in, you know, like, the way these group fights would be handled in previous games was it'd be like five or six guys in a room and then like I don't know, more will spawn if you kill one but here look at it, it's like 10 20 and if you kill one more will spawn like i mean it's just a whole nother scale and on ps3 like man this could chug a little but thankfully like on the ps4 it's running at a smooth 60 and it is a dream to behold something like this ambitious which like the ps3 was kind of struggling to render like being like be, like running at this smooth 60 fps fidelity it's amazing though i guess one positive of the dragon engine is that like these kind of fights kind of happen more regularly just because that engine i guess is more adapted at handling them but i don't know fighting enemies can still be kind of annoying in the dragon engine but they do have their group fights i don't know uh, kiwami 2 has that one insane like group fight in like the bouncer missions and most of judge eyes boss fights are just like insane group fights so there's that but here, I don't know, they kind of balanced it out because, like, I don't know, this, like, massive group is incredibly hard to deal with in, like, the Yakuza 5 engine, but there is ways to deal with them. And it's mostly relying on your grab combos, kind of square, triangle, circle. Oh, yeah, I should probably mention I am using equipment. I'm, I'm using the, the, the Amulet of Goddess's Blessing or something. I, don't know, I forgot the name. It's, it's light blue, and it pretty much, like, lowers the aggressivity of the enemies around you because with all these enemies around you, they get aggressive! like really really aggressive like you'll be trying to take out one guy another guy will start literally run behind you do like a jump kick and you like from like across the screen you won't even know so i don't know like the the less uh, aggression i have to deal with the better also i have double health bars here but i do not want the double health bars for the health i want them for the power upgrade i want the max strength like focus and spirit so like, I mean, I'm taking every single advantage I can get except for using weapons, but to be fair, I don't even think weapons could really help you here. So, okay, I forgot to mention the strat I did, like, in the beginning of this fight. So, in the beginning, I run to a corner, and then I activate, like, Kiryu's, like, super red heat mode, where he's invincible and can do, like, super punches. The reason I go to the corner is because enemies tend to bunch up into that corner, so then when you're, like, doing the, like, the little one-two punchy attacks, like, you'll be hitting a ton of enemies, like, straight in front of you, and that's how I was able to kill so many people to move on to the next phase of the fight. And, like, that's the thing, this fight has, like, phases and all that. You have, like, a gun guy, you know, I gotta watch out for the gun guy, and then after that, you get to do the rocket launchers, and then don't use the rocket launchers every game but to be fair a fight like this with dudes with rocket launchers would be hell <laughs> and then after that you get the dude like does some karate or whatnot and he can be annoying to deal with so, you know you gotta be really careful with him it's just con like this is like one of the most insane fights in the series also one of the most frustrating easily the hardest fight in this game like i, I go as far as to say he's definitely like this fight is definitely harder than like the amones in this game but um, I mean, the Amons can be challenging, but this is just insane. Like, Yakuza 5 has a collection of group fights that are just insane, but, like, this one just takes the cake. Like, ooh, just all of it. Just, and I kind of love it, but it's also very frustrating to no damage. Like, this took me upwards, like, three or five hours. Like, oh, my goodness, just absolute buffoonery. So, yeah, besides that, pretty much the strat is to run around, wait for, like, an isolated enemy to show up, uh, like, hit that enemy, go for the grab combo, and build up heat. When you build up heat, then you go into super mode to take out as many enemies as possible. However, your super mode is not infinite, and if you, like, get careless with it, it will run out, and you'll be stuck, like, in a group of enemies who are all ready to hit you with, like, like, you know, second precision. Like, I mean, these enemies attack super fast. Like, some of them will just attack in less than a second, so if you're stuck in a group of them after your red heat mode is done, that's a big no. No, no. So what I do is I rely on the punch because like the punching, like on the square, square, square attacks, they like deplete the heat bar like the least. 
And then, like, to kind of finish off, like, I don't know, my red heat state, I don't know, if I think I'm gonna, like, you know, run out of my heat, I go for a grab, which kind of, like, gets rid of the group around me. And, oh, yeah, so here we have ended the fight, and we're just gonna go into a little cute cinematic moment, which I think is awesome. But, yeah. I don't know, red heat in this game is complicated sometimes because I don't know sometimes like when you go into like the super mode like you'll actually see your you'll actually see your bar going down and you have a good indication of like when it's gonna end but I don't know for some reason in my fight like I don't know when I go into super mode it just has like this glowy effect and I have zero idea if like it's gonna end or not and like why does the game do that like I want that information that information is very useful so I can know like just how much I can get away with I don't know, sometimes I just have to guess. Like, I mean, how much I had left. Kind of, like, approximate it. Because, like, you know, I can't, like, predict this stuff just if you're not going to show it to me. Like, man, come on. So, anyways, here Kiryu dodged, like, an entire bullet case. Entire, like, sh or, or, like volley of bullets because this guy in green sucks. So, yeah, that ends the Tojo Clan fight. And it also ends Kiryu's part in this game. And here we open up with Saijima with a fight that kind of serves more as a tutorial but I decided to no damage it because we're in the baseball ring and I think that's pretty cool so okay so I, I mentioned I'm doing this in new game and I gotta say that like Yakuza 5 is really fitted for like new game like runs of like no damage at least like a lot it's definitely a lot more suited than say Yakuza 3 and that's because like I don't know same thing with like Yakuza 4 is that like I don't know each game well Yakuza 5 in particular like because we're like splicing it up across like five characters they make upgrading each of them like a lot faster than like some of the more 1v like you know singular games with only kiryu so you can kind of you can kind of make a beeline for all the useful skills you want ignore health upgrades and you can get a pretty good build for like tackling no damage fights I mean, okay, when I, when, I, when I said Yakuza 4, I might have to take that back because Saijima in the beginning of that game has very little chances to grind. And then you have to deal with, like, two of the toughest boss fights immediately with him. So, I don't know, Yakuza 4 new game, new game run would be very annoying just because Saijima is just put in a very bad place at a very bad time. However, here, uh, I don't know, you start off in Kamarocho with Saijima, so you can kind of grind, like, some of the enemies, like, in the area to get some of your useful abilities, like, you know, your triple charge combos and all that. And you're gonna need some of these abilities to deal with, like, the boss fight that's gonna show up in the prison he, like, goes to later. Mana, but for Kiryu, like, I mean, that first guy's a good little bit of a doozy, but then after you beat that first guy, you can go to, like, that trainer. You can go to, like, the like, Kiryu's trainer in this game and get, like, the Komaki Parry, and if you grind around a bit, even the Tiger drop, but I was a little lazy at the moment, I didn't get it. And also, I really didn't need it for, like, the boss fights I was gonna face in this chapter, so, you know. Oh, wait, actually, I did get it. I got it for yeah <laughs> Yahata. But anyways, we're besides that point. So you can get the Komaki parry and even Tiger Drop for like the second fight, which like Kiryu fights. And then after like you fight those guys, you have access to the taxi like submission, like side business. You can just gr do all of that to like get a ton of XP. And that's what I did because in this game, I pretty much just kind of treated it as a big old replay of like Yakuza 5. Now, I don't know, I've done all the side content in this game, well, once before on PS3. And um, dude, I did it all again on PS4 for this run. So anyways, for this guy, he's tricky, but I have red heat attacks with Saijima, so I just kind of just take out the entire crowd like that. And now we're left with just this bald guy. So, I don't know, there really isn't any good chances to do combos on this guy, because I don't know, a lot of his openings aren't really openings. Like, he tends to, like, dodge out of his stuff really quickly. And you can't attack him head on, because he'll just, like, break out of it, or, like, dodge out of it, or, like, do an, a, a counter attack. So pretty much what I do is I'm pretty much just going to rely on charge attacks. So in the beginning here, like, I mean, it's going to be useful for me, but in the second fight, it's going to drag a little because I don't know, I don't find, I don't really, I, I don't know, I don't know of any good timing to like do the charging attack because I don't know, in like his second fight, his arena is way bigger and he just tends to run around because he has a running like dash attack just like Saito has. However, unlike Saito, you can't exploit his running attack, at least not in the way I want to. So that's kind of sad. So I was talking about trainers or something. So yeah, with Kiryu, like, I mean, once you have access to the taxi stuff, you can kind of grind that out and you're pretty much good for the rest of his chapter. Now for Sanjima here, like this section and the fight that comes after is going to be a little tough because you don't have access to any good grinding opportunities once you hit the jail. And with Kamarocho, you can really only grind up to a certain point. Like, it'll be good enough. Like, I mean, hey, I was able to do this video, so, you know. I, 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 I mean, I figured a way out. So, there's that. And I guess what I like about Yakuza 5 is that, I don't know, unlike, 
I don't know, like, I mean, try, like, a new game, like, run in, like, Yakuza 3, and that would be, like, ooh, because it takes so, so long to get all the upgrades. Like, you'd be so underpowered for, like, most of the fights. Like, I don't know, I mean, Yakuza 3 is definitely a game centered for, like, new game plus. However, to be fair, Yakuza 3 is kind of an anomaly. But, I mean, even then, like, on Yakuza 0, like, in order to get all the abilities in that game, you have to do, like, the side content, so... I mean, to be fair, New Game Plus in that game is, like, stupid easy. So, I mean, there, it's, like, you know, kind of a give and take, I guess. Like, I mean, you get most of the interesting abilities if you do New Game Plus, but on New Game, uh, the boss fights are actually kind of, like, leveled to match with you. So, I don't know, there's that. But, I don't know, one thing I really like about Yakuza 5 is just... I don't know, like... Replaying this game... Like, I think Yakuza 5 may actually be, like, my favorite in the series. Like, it, it, it would have to de dethrone Zero. And to be fair, I mean, I, I always was considering, like, you know, Zero, Five, and Ishin to be, like, the top three dogs in, like, the entire series. But to be fair, and I'm kind of changing my mind on that a little. Like, I would definitely put Ishin below Zero and Five, even though Ishin is really great. And has a lot of elements that may be better than those games, but I don't know. I find Zero and Five more compelling experiences. But now, like, considering it, like, I don't know, I mean, there's definitely a lot of things which are better in Zero, but I think Five is just like way more of an engaging overall package. Like, man, this is like definitely like the most ambitious like game, and I think it pays off in a lot of ways. Like, I don't know, like I mean, there's like uh, there's a game with like a ton of content. Like I'll say like I don't know, Kiwami 2 has a lot of content, but I don't know, a lot of it is kind of uh, well. First of all, a lot of it's copied. Some of it's kind of tedious. But like here in Yakuza Five, like, there's a ton of content, and most of it is awesome. Like, on all the side businesses are, like, probably, like, some of the best stuff they've created in the series. Like, the taxi driving's fun. Um, I mean, the hunting's really fun. Like, the idle stuff, like, I mean, for, like, a big minigame stuff is also, like, pretty dope. And the uh, basketball stuff... No, not basketball. I mean, I, it, would be, it would be cool to see basketball in the Yakuza, but not baseball. They actually made it fun this time. Like, I don't know, it was kind of a, like a suck-ass minigame in the previous games. And it was here we're fighting a giant bear. And this fight terrified me, but once I figured out a strap for it, it was a little less scary. So, <laughs> so anyway, so when he does this like big roar thing where he stands up, you kind of get a chance to do a full combo. However, it's a little risky, and sometimes he kind of breaks out of it, so you got to be careful with it. So... The thing with this bear is, like, I was scared because, like, I don't know, in uh, Yakuza 2, you fought tigers, and those guys had, like, really dangerous AI, and I had no idea how to tackle them. I, I, I mean, I dragged that fight out so long. However, here, this bear is actually better designed than those tigers. So, I don't know, if you hit the bear's, like, head with, like, a heavy attack, he kind of gets stunned for a little moment, which gives me a chance to, like, land two hits. Pop, pop, like that. So, what I do is... I pretty much just like slide into the bear because I don't know when I'm far away like this the bear can't really do much however if I try to land like a heavy combo attack you know like a square triangle like that might give the bear enough time to actually retaliate and I do not want that however this sliding attack avoids that issue so it's pretty much what I'm relying on like you know run away from the bear I don't know like I mean kind of let him do an attack wait for him to be like kind of open kind of static and then rush in for an attack Pop! and then go for two hits. Now the reason I go for two hits is because the bear has this one grab attack he does where he rushes towards you and kind of lifts his head up. And to be fair, you'll be and if he does that, like it'll pre you'll pretty much be grabbed before uh, you even realize the grab. So if I do two hits, that gives me enough time to duck out of there. However, sometimes I get a little cheeky with him and go for like three hits. However, uh, if you go for three hits all the time, like the grab will grab you because I don't know, you won't be able to dodge in time, so there's that. So yeah, I don't know, like, given that I was actually able to figure out a strat without relying on the tiger drop, I think this fight's pretty fun. However, this attempt's a little sloppy because I tend to do the dash attack from too far away, so I don't actually hit the bear and I just kind of stand there. Yeah, like that. I, I, I did that a lot in this attempt, however, I'm going to show you the very next clip is me fighting him again, but like in the side quest version where he, he's pretty much the same fight just in a different environment and also I have swaggier clothes in that version. And also he actually gets named uh, Yama, Yamaroshi. I think that's how you say it. So yeah, here's Sajima fighting a bear. So I was talking about why I liked five more than zero, and it's just like man, I just love like I mean there was something I really loved about Yakuza Four, how I felt like kind of like four like mini Yakuza games kind of built into one, and here it's just like that idea, but like with way more of a budget and like just way more like time and like detail put into it. Like it like, it's not it doesn't really feel like a huge game per se, even though it is an absolutely massive game. It feels like five like five or four like short yakuza games built into like one mega game and like the and what this does for the game is that it gives it so much variety that even with like its bloat of content it never gets tedious or like 
I don't know, repetitive per se, like some of the stuff in like the other games could get like zero. Because I don't know, I mean, zero has a ton of content, but I don't know, some of it could be a little tedious, like I don't know, the real estate stuff, like most of that is a waiting game, so that's kind of sad. But like this game, it's just like, I don't know, like, you do all the taxi stuff, and it's like that has like a nice little variety of stuff. Like, oh, you have like the normal taxi missions, and you have the side quest taxi missions. Then you have like the taxi missions where you do racing. Like, I mean, like some of it could like repeat, but like for the most part, it was constantly keeping you like on your toes of content. And while it's not exactly the most polished like taxi stuff, I don't know, like the taxi stuff where you're just driving people normally around is pretty fun. But the racing stuff is like a little too simple, but it's still like a nice bit of janky fun. However, uh, but yeah, I don't know, I mean, you finish that, like, well, it'll take you, like, what, five, six hours, and then you have, like, Kiryu's main story, which is, like, four chapters, and, you know, like, a level, a couple bosses, and then, like, ooh, you're done. And then you move on to Saejima, it's something completely new, however, Saejima does have a bit of a flaw in his chapters. Like, his beginning is immensely dragged out. Like, I don't know, I mean, the, the start in Kamurocho is, like, neat, and also uh, the beginning cutscene of, like, Saejima's, like, uh, chapters is one of my favorites in the series, which is, like, Saejima and, like, Majima just eating, like, like, tripe meat. I don't know, just a really neat, like, heartwarming little scene. Kind of shows, like, the relationship between the brothers more. Like, I, I don't know. It's one of my favorite scenes in the series. And also gives Majima a little more personality outside of Crazy Man. So, like, you know, like, uh, like, 4 and 5 were really starting to, like, signify that, yo, Majima is, like, there's a little more going on with him than what you saw in the previous games, which was really neat. So... Yeah, so I don't know, it's just a ton of variety. I mean, you start with Saejima, and he has this whole different vibe. Like, I mean, his chapter, I mean, is kind of indicative of, like, all the variety. Because I know, I mean, first chapter, you're in Kamurocho. I mean, second chapter, you're, like, in the prison. And then third chapter, you're in the hunting village. And, like, you know, the final chapter, you have literally the entire city that Saejima gets. Now, that, I mean, that, I, I thought that was, like, a little rushed. But still, it's just, like, you're constantly doing things. So you're never going to get sick of, like, one place or whatnot. And then after you're done with Saejima, oh, you're playing a rhythm game now. Like, what? And, like, you know, the rhythm game stuff, is, I think, is the kind of a make or break for most people. But before I get to that, let's talk about Baba here. Because he is a sick-ass fight, and he has a sick-ass theme, bro. So, yeah, besides that... Uh, this fight's pretty cool, though I don't think he's exactly suited to Saejima's fighting style, but I did find a way to do, do a better attempt this time. Now, in the beginning when he's not in heat mode, you can kind of go for a square, square, charge, triangle, triangle, because I'll break, like, the first triangle will, like, break his attack, and then, like, the second triangle will, like, actually launch him across the room. Then after that, do some heat actions. However, once he enters heat mode, it's best to stick to grabs and building heat so you can deal heat actions. So... Oh yeah, another neat thing I like about Yakuza 5 is that all its boss fights, I don't know, if it has, if they have like a heat mode of sorts, they'll like, you know, spend some time, you know, going into it to do like a little taunt. And like, you know, in some, in some of the future games, like in Yakuza 0, when boss fights do this, they'll have like a shield which pretty much protects them from any attacks, so it's kind of like, okay, they're getting, they're going to like their super mode. However, here, when they do that, they're actually completely open to attack. So, you could actually land some combos while they're doing that. If you know, like, if you know the exact point when the boss fight's gonna pop their heat mode, you can take advantage of that and, like, actually deal a full combo. I mean, to be fair, you have to be careful, because, like, I mean, if you take too long dealing a combo, like, the enemy will just retaliate. However, if you, like, you know, deal a combo or get out of there, or maybe deal a grab combo and, like, launch the boss fight out of it, I mean, it's just a really useful skill, and I do take advantage of some of the other boss fights. But for here, side jump up. So the strategy here is kind of wait for Baba to like do like the funny kicks. Like the funny kicks is like his most exploitable attack. Because once he's done with the funny kicks, you can a uh, tiger drop it if you have the tiger drop, or b grab him when he's that. Oh yeah, the funny kicks you can also like dodge behind him and actually deal a, like a full combo if you know you're careful. I mean, you can deal like one, two, three and go for like a light heavy however sometimes he'll block the light heavy but it is possible if you know like the kicks are coming you can kind of dodge behind him and, and in this attempt to actually do it at the very end that's like the last thing i do to baba here but i mean i don't know i mostly stuck with grabs because like most of his attacks you can't really dodge behind him and do the full combo sadly but here ooh, pop, 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 pop. Ah, there we go and that ends the baba fight the So here we're gonna move on to something completely different. Yeah, rhythm battles. Whoa, do you like uh, Hatsune Miku? 
Domino's here does. So anyways, here I'm going to no damage the concert battles. Now, how am I going to go about this? Well, the way I'm going to define it is that I don't break my combo. So at a certain point, I am going to get a good and it's going to be horrible for you to see, but I'm going to keep it in because I'm not going to repeat these battles over and over again. Because the annoying thing about these battles is that they're not exactly hard per se. Like, I mean, compared to some other rhythm games, it's like baby stuff. But every time you fail, and by fail, I mean get a good. At least, I don't know. Like, I mean, getting a good isn't failing. I, I mean, I didn't break my combo. I didn't take any damage. So it's like, let's go. However, getting a good... <laughs> like, seeing that you got a good means you have to quit the game, enter the game again, go through all the unskippable cutscenes to get to this point again. It's like, no. No. I have an unbreakable combo. I'm good enough with that. I'm not going to repeat all that. So anyways, uh, localization. Because, I don't know, you can actually see some lyrics at the bottom left of the screen. So, Haruka's a pop idol in this game. And I don't know, I mean, I guess a lot of idol music is kind of like very cheerful, kind of like get you out of depression mode type stuff. Like, you know, embrace life again, love life. <laughs> However, uh, I, don't know, I don't know. I actually like compared the translation between this version and the original, which released on PS3. Because I don't know. Uh, so Yakuza 3, 4, and 5 released on PS3. Like, they kind of have like their own unique translations. But then when the remasters released, they retranslated like these three games. Now, for Yakuza 3, the retranslation was absolutely needed but for four and five you know i mean they were fine however uh, this retranslation does give some benefits and one of these benefits i think like the lyrics presented in the remaster here are actually like way more like engaging and get you more into the emotion of the song than the original's lyrics i don't know like the original's lyrics kind of give me a vibe that maybe they translated certain things too literally maybe they didn't take a couple liberties to get like the feeling of the song however uh it also got me thinking that they also translated the karaoke lyrics in the remaster and I actually heard some complaints about the karaoke lyrics because I don't know one thing about the karaoke lyrics is that I don't know certain songs like they kind of ignored some of the subtleties of certain songs like in the original Japanese language in order to write lyrics which sounded more singable like I don't know one example I kept hearing about was uh, Pure Love in Kamurocho which is a song which Akiyama can sing in Yakuza 4 and Dead Souls and Ryuji can sing that song too which is awesome but anyways, I don't know, in the, in the translation of like uh, that song's like lyrics in the Yakuza 4 Remaster, some people pointed out that it kind of like ignored some of the subtleties between like Kamurocho hostesses or whatnot. I don't know, I wasn't, I'm not 100% clear what the hell they were going on about, but I don't know, it sounded interesting because I don't know, apparently they just kind of ignored some of the things to kind of make a more singable song or more like to kind of make it read better as like a singable song, you know, to have lyrics you can actually like naturally sing and all that and they kind of took that approach with most of the karaoke songs i heard and i don't really know the implications of most of these decisions but it's an interesting topic and i'm kind of wondering if they did that with haruka songs in this game because i'm just not 100 percent sure on that anyways here is the other facet of haruka's gameplay dance battles now this has a completely different type of rhythm game to it now in like haruka's concert battles uh which are different from the dance battles like you have more just kind of look at the buttons and press the buttons when you want to press them but here you have a little bit more to deal with you have like these four sections which you have to like go to and actually press the buttons there and like i mean it's still kind of baby stuff however in hard it can get slightly hectic however for a veteran of rhythm games it's still going to be baby stuff <laughs> And you have an ability to, and you also have abilities here. When you build heat, you can kind of press L1 and choose either to lower someone's heat, like raise your points. I mean, there's a lot of different things you can do. However, I'm going to exclusively lower people's heat because when people have heat, that is the only time they can damage you. So the way you take damage in this game, because it, in this game, you can actually take damage. I mean, in the concert battles, the only way to, you know, hypothetically take damage is to like miss a note or whatnot. You know, because, oh, you missed a no, you broke your combo. But you don't actually have any health in that mode, so there's nothing to lose. However, here you actually do have health to lose. And pretty much, so, in the middle, you hit, there's this bomb here. You can either go to the side of the opponent, which strikes them, or you can go to your side and strike you. Now, the way you don't make it strike you is to actually hit the notes right. Because, you know, if you miss notes, the bomb will start going your way. But if your opponent starts missing notes, or, yeah, see, look, oh, your, our opponent here, Akari, started missing some notes, and now she's going to get ba-bombed. And you can also get damaged if like your opponent builds up their heat and does a heat action because some of their heat actions, you know, they can do the same stuff you can do. You, they can lower your heat, they can raise their points, or they can strike back at you and deal damage to you directly. And that would literally be taking damage. And since this is a no damage video, I want to avoid that. So anyways, hey, look, she's fat. She is very fat. Isn't that funny? Isn't that funny? She farts. Isn't that fat? <laughs> So anyways, this fight's really easy. 
So I'm just gonna ignore <laughs> any strategy. However, actually no, I'm gonna talk about the the fight a little bit. So this song here, I don't know. I think there's like two different versions of this song in the game. Like there's one which is kind of like in a bit of a broken English style. While here, I'm gonna guess it's French. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm probably wrong on that front, but I think this language is sung in like French or whatnot. I will say I think this version slaps more, but there is another version of this song in the game. I don't know, it's kind of weird that they kind of like, kind of gave some variety in that sense. And oh yeah, these dance battles, I don't know, they have some pretty cool music. However, sometimes I kind of question the genre certain songs belong to. Like, I don't know, the one song which belongs to the jazz category, what? Like, I don't know, I mean, if you played the game, you might know what I'm referring to, but like, it's called like, uh, like, uh, abrak. I don't know how to pronounce that third word. But that song, how is that a jazz song? What? That doesn't sound like jazz to me. It sounds a lot more poppy. But, oh yeah, so I, know, I guess I'll explain that. One reason I only do like the lower heat attack is because if I lower my opponent's heat, like they can't, they can't really do anything to me. And I don't really need to take out their health because like either the game will kill them like naturally or I'll just perfect the game because, I mean, the only reason I would ever need like some of the other abilities is if I'm missing notes and need to build up points. However, the point is I'm trying to do no damage, so I'm never going to miss any points. So like it, that's kind of point. Anyways, Akiyama, we have some actual combat again. Isn't that just wonderful? So here, I was kind of worried that this fight might be like uber difficult because Akiyama has no upgrades. However, these guys are complete chumps. Like the group has zero health. Like Akamada here has like z almost no defense. However, in the beginning here, he's kind of blocking some of my attacks because you, because actually need to get an upgrade to like get some like like guard breaking attacks. So there's that. But anyways, we're just gonna get rid of him because he's really easy and all that. So moving on. We have this horrible, horrible fight. However, one saving grace is that before this fight, you can do all of Akiyama's side quests to build up a ton of XP to get all the cool moves you want. So here, I'm going to cheese the living hell out of this guy. So Akiyama's a really cool red heat attack. However, what that's going to do is that that's going to put him on the ground. And what happens on the ground is going to be a wonderful, wonderful stun lock, which doesn't work on <laughs> any on most boss fights for Akiyama, but it does work on Ogita here. And from here, we're just gonna manipulate him to pretty much get stun locked. And you know, when it's like convenient, I'll do some heat actions on him to get some extra style and damage on him. So, yeah, pretty much a square, square, triangle, triangle. Like, what it'll do is that the first one will, like, you know, keep him on the ground, the second one will just knock him down to the ground again. And we're just gonna keep repeating this over and over because this guy is horrible. Like, he has a Capoeira like fighting style. And that fighting style was really dope to fight in Yakuza 4, but this guy has a new version of it or whatnot, like another type of Kapoeda fighting style, and it's just horrible. Like, dude has super armor out the ass. He has attacks which just like, can like auto grab you. Like, no, no. And then he has very little openings to attack him naturally, so cheap. We're going cheap all the way. And I guess uh, Akiyama's combat style in Yakuza 5 is amazing. His boss fights, eh, not so much. Like here is a guy Akiyama's gonna fight for most of this game. He hits Kanai and I don't know, the first couple of fights aren't too bad, however the final fight is horrible. I mean and the second fight kinda starts to like rave like kinda ren into that direction. So like Kanai, like I don't know, Akiyama like has tools to deal with him, but he isn't exactly the most like Akiyama isn't exactly the most capable person to handle Kanai here. Like he's certainly not as like uh flexible as some of the Yakuza 4 boss fights, but to be fair, in Yakuza 4, you could infant enem you could like infinite enemies if you get them into a corner, so I mean, it's kind of broken in that sense. Now here I got lucky and I was able to do like almost a full combo, and oh yeah, this QTE comes out super fast. I don't know, I got lucky there that it didn't come out so fast, so I was able to like actually get the timing right. So here, like on the the goal is to kind of like dodge like kind of use like first couple of attacks, and then you can, from there you can kind of do like a full light combo. However, I don't advise you to go for a heavy combo because that isn't really that useful but here after that once you build heat again you can kind of go for some cool heat attacks and just kind of go from there however one thing about the first two kanai fights you have is that like i don't know this like last health bar isn't that important because you just get like a qte type moment where you just take out most of it so you don't really need to worry about that however uh, for the second kanai fight there's going to be a lot more a lot of other things to worry about okay we're back to the concert battle so let me get back to my point about the uh, the lyrics so the karaoke songs might have actually been like translated more for like their singing value than like some of the hidden like 
hidden like I don't know, messages value or whatever. I don't, I don't know how to describe it. But like for these Haruka songs, I'm not 100% sure if that's really the case because it feels like these songs definitely like have a lot of thematic like thematic value to like the game itself. So I don't think they exactly like went for the singing thing. I think they went more for like the meaning behind the songs because I don't know. I mean. Like, Haruka's, like, de like concert battles here are doing, like, I don't know, two things. Like, I mean, they're kind of appealing to, like, what... Like, they're they're very much, like, normal, like, idol songs. Like, I mean, it's kind of, like, stuff you would expect in the genre. And they're I'm, they're pretty good. But I also think the lyrics are very reflective of, like, Haruka's, like, story in, like, Yakuza 5. I'm not sure how this one uh, applies. Maybe it's, like... Haruka like kind of feels alone because like of the Kiryu situation and all that and Kiryu kind of feels like the same way But I don't know. I mean this one like feels a little less relevant than like the, the other two maybe mm, I don't know. I mean, I haven't really done a deep dive into lyrics or whatever But like they definitely feel like thematically relevant to like Haruka's like departure from Kiryu And kind of how Kiryu kind of abandons like the orphanage so that he does so they don't get involved with him and all that Hmm, like the, the third song definitely feels very much in tone with that though these first two like so much more in loneliness loop could be uh could go either way but the uh, like the third one like because i have you definitely is that so th anyways out of all of haruka's song this one's definitely the hardest it's the most high tempo so like the beats are always just coming 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 and like one annoying thing you have to deal with is that uh I don't know, you'll be dealing with like one strand of beats and then like another strand of beats will start coming in and you won't really notice that it's going to come immediately. Oh yeah, what's up with these outfits? Kind of sus, my guy. But hey, maybe it's like some idol history I'm missing or whatnot. I don't know too much about idols, so I don't know if there's like some like historical reason why Kara like, gets dresses like this. I don't know, tell me because like Yakuza Zero had like re had stuff like that. I don't know with Majima like wearing the goofy ass like idol costume. There was actually like an idol group that dressed exactly like that, so I don't know. Like, if there's an example for Haruka here, like, I don't know, I mean, let me know, I don't know, be interesting, but, I don't know, sus, my guy. So, anyways, this song is annoying, but not too annoying, and, well, compared to, like, an actual rhythm game, like, this is nothing. <laughs> but, I am not a rhythm game expert, so, it, this was eh, mildly challenging to get, like, a full combo, but not really challenging, per se. And also, just to let you know, I did get some goods in this song. I don't know if you noticed them, then I'm, I feel sorry for you, but oh well. Oh yeah, you might have noticed that I have not been using my idle heat at all. And the reason I do that is because, I don't know, that's just a mechanic which like like distracts me from hitting the notes on time. Like I mean, I, I mean I'm already like thinking too much. Like, oh, I gotta hit them notes on time and not break my combo. I do not have time to also consider. Hmm, what's the best time to use idle heat? And I I don't even really need to use idle heat. If I perfect the song without breaking a combo, I'm gonna win. So there's no point in using idle heat. And once I hit the climax heat, like I'm already gonna have the properties of like idle heat for like half of the fight. So it's like. I'm not gonna bother with that. Like, I, I need to hit the notes on time. I'm not gonna fail an attempt because I'm trying to think about, mmm, when am I gonna use idle heat? Mm, yeah. So yeah, I'm just not gonna bother with that. So anyways, this song definitely feels like the most thematically like relevant for like Haruka at this point. Cause it's kind of like, damn. Like, I mean, she really wants to get back with Kiryu and all that. Like, damn. This situation's like fucked up. Like, I don't know. So Haruka's story in this game, like, I don't know, it's conflicting, but overall I think it's really good. But like, well, I don't know, some things that kind of bother me is that, uh, damn, like, I mean, Park? Uh, so Park is like this character in this game, and it's like, the game, like, I don't know, I kind of like how gray the situation is, because what she's doing isn't exactly, like, completely morally right, but she's kind of like fucking, like, fucking with Kiryu and, like, Haruka, like, damn, you're really gonna do this just to, like, achieve your dream of being an idol? Like, that's kind of fucked up. However, like, I don't know, I don't know, it's complicated to explain. Like, I don't know, I mean, there's just a lot of, like, elements in, like, uh, in the Arca story that are a lot darker than you would, like, at first know. Like, I don't know, I mean, it starts off as kind of like, oh, she's gonna be an idol, you know, we're gonna win the Princess League or whatever, but then, like, uh, Park fucking dies, and then, like, the agency is, like, assumed to, like, go down in flames afterwards, because, like, I mean, after this, like, her big concert in Tokyo, like, what, what exactly are they gonna do? I mean, like, Haruka dipped <laughs> because she revealed to everyone that, like, she's Kiryu's, like, daughter or whatever. So the agency kind of go, goes up in flames after that to an extent. At least, like, Haruka's career definitely went up in flames, like, after this one moment of achieving the dream. And it's like, her dream wasn't really to be an idol. That's more Park's dream, which, like, she kind of passes on because it'd be cool or whatnot. But then, like, I don't know. 
Like, I mean, I'm fine with Park being kind of unlikable, like, it adds more complexity to the game or whatever, and I'd say she's a pretty, like, well-written character, even if she's not the most likable. Though it's kind of weird how every character, like, afterwards, like, damn, she's she really believes in her dream and shit, and it's like, mm, I mean, yeah, I guess, but it's still kind of fucked up what she did to Kiryu, like, what? Because, I mean, the whole, nearly, like, most of this conflict in the game is, like, from fucking, like, Kiryu leaving. That's not necessarily true, That that's another game. I don't know, most of the conflict in this game revolves around a dude who's about to die and kind of fucks shit up for that. <laughs> a lot of this game is around a dude who wants to die. And oh yeah, those th those themes kind of appear through the story throughout. Like, I mean, you want to follow your dreams, but if your dream dies, then you want to die. And that kind of shows up in Baba, who kind of like stops, I don't know, kind of loses his purpose in life for a little bit. And that's why he's like a little bit suicidal. A little bit, no, he definitely is suicidal. And that kind of plays into his story, and how kind of like Saijima and like, and like the prison mates kind of help him out of that. Oh yeah, and that just reminds me. I kind of love how the side side content in the Yakuza Five, like, like kind of. Also oh, here we're gonna fight a bunch of normal like goons, and I'm just gonna absolutely style on them. But I don't know, one thing I really love about Yakuza Five is how the side content like naturally like flows into the story. Like with the taxi stuff, like I don't know, like the racing like I don't know story isn't that compelling it's kind of like it's kind of filled with a couple characters i'm just who are kind of tropey and like whatever like it's kind of like the goofy kind of story which like future yakuza games are like do when they're like their side businesses like if you played like the real estate in yakuza zero you know it's like oh here are the five billionaires evil evil yakuza 5 kind of has like a prototype version of that and it's like eh, whatever however it also has uh it also connects like the taxi like manager or whatever to the main story. You know, it has this one really great scene where it kind of explains like I don't know why he built the stuff and it kinda of relates back to the Kiryu story when like he's saying goodbye to Kiryu. Like that has a lot more weight if you've actually done all the taxi stuff. Oh yeah, so here I'm just gonna absolutely demolish you guys. Like, I'm gonna kick this one guy into a group of six. The entire group of six just fucking dies. Like what? And then I'm gonna like <laughs> I just took out that guy and like the combo I was doing on that guy naturally transitioned to this guy where I just stun lock him on the ground. I'm gonna go for a finisher there. Boom! It's over. What? That was like 20 seconds. Insanity. Here we're gonna deal with a very complicated group fight though not as complicated as he's gonna get later on so kind of eat baby so here we're gonna be completely relying well almost completely relying on like uh, Akiyama's heat action here we can take out three guys at once with a heat action however we're gonna keep repeating it however it's not gonna be as useful when we repeat it because uh, I mean you repeat a heat action it deals less damage yada 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 but it's still very useful so we're still gonna keep doing it and here we have a red heat thing which we're gonna use later on in the fight However, I'm actually pre I'm actually styling quite hard here. However, like the most dangerous thing is that Kana is a persistent dude. Like I mean, you're attacking someone, he'll like rush in with his combos, and you'll be in the middle of an attack, so you can't really dodge. It's yada yada yada. Just tough, tough, tough. So here we have a red heat attack where if you taunt and then pr press the red heat action, you get to do the sick little stomp. And the reason I like to do the stomp is because it deals all the damage all at once. Boom! Look at that. I don't know, with like the kicks you do normally, like I don't know, it's kind of like a li little bit of damage that builds up. But here, just one massive attack. I like that. So here, another fast QT you need to be on the lookout for. And on one thing which I'm really grateful for in this kind of fight is I don't really have to deal with combos too much with this guy because I mostly just do heat actions to kind of like put his health bar down and that pretty much gets me through the fight pretty well. In the nuts. <laughs> So here I'm trying to recreate something I did in my first attempt where I don't know when like I when I hit Kanai like when he's on the ground he kind of guard broke out of it and then transitioned to this part and then all the enemies were afraid for some reason and I'm kind of like damn how did I do that that was really sick maybe I can recreate it but it did not end up happening however I still got a, a better attempt here like my first phase was a lot faster and here I'm handling things pretty well so I'm happy with this attempt and also it's at 60 FPS oh yeah so I keep mentioning like previous attempts I don't know if you look at some of my older videos on my channel you'll actually see that I've actually no damaged some Yakuza 5 boss fights. However, the footage is at 720p and at 30 FPS and also recorded from the PS4. However, here it's at 720p, 60 FPS, but at least it's 60 though. So that's pretty sick. And also these, some of these attempts are better. I'd say like most of my attempts are better. I'd say all of my attempts are better. <laughs> like I think I definitely like improved upon like my previous uh, like no damage attempt, so I'm pretty happy with it. So here this ends Akiyama's like uh, final fight here. And also Akiyama had much better fights in Yakuza 4 which is a shame but these fights aren't necessarily awful per se they're just kind of 
Mm, not exactly suited for his character. So anyways, here we have the GOAT of Yakuza 5, Shinada. And here we're going to get used to his rather unique style of fighting, which is a little limiting when compared to some of the other characters. However, we're in Yakuza 5, so even when you're limited, you're not really limited. You're pretty OP. So, know, so with Shinada, you can't really, like, I don't know, deal regular combos per se. You got to get these pokes. So pretty much, like... Square, triangle, circle. So pokes, I don't know, it's like, hey, you poked around in Yakuza 6, but you didn't really like that. Why do you like this? Well, I don't know, it's just more consistent. Like, I mean, there's better openings. Like, the openings are consistent. Like, I don't know, it feels good to actually get a grab combo in there. Like, yeah, don't come on the ground. It's always consistent. You can set him up for heat actions pretty well. And Shinada has a couple other things. He's red heat at his red heat attacks. He has that one, like, grab counter thing, which kind of works as his version of Tiger Drop, which I never used because I never really needed it, except for the lava fight. You'll see when I use it. But here, we're just kind of knocking him to the ground, dealing heat acting in there, having a convulsion when we're going to win the fight, yada yada yada, fun stuff like that. Oh yeah, if you want to know how to do the funny walk, which I did, pretty much just like, uh, like spam the R1 button, just kind of like, like flicker it on, flicker it over and over and over, like, you know, like, like just hit the R1 button while like, like walking or whatnot, and you'll do the funny walk, like, we just kind of vibrate a lot, it's funny. So Hideki Nakamuya composed music for this game, however the one song he composed for this game only appears in this fight. Now this is a side quest battle, it's stupid easy, but I had to include it because this song is the only song which Hideki Nakamiya composed for the game, so hey, why not include it? Hey, these men are naked and also they rape people, isn't that funny? Hey, 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 hey. So yeah, we're just gonna destroy these guys pretty effectively and just kind of move on from there. So here, I keep poking fun at like some of the immature humor which the Yakuza games could have, and I, don't, I mean, some of it I think is funny, but I don't know, some of the stuff with like fat people just kind of gets old. Like, hey, look at him, he is very fat and he eats a lot. Please laugh. Like, eh, no, no, I don't think I will. So here we have a, this guy who is a little bit more of a tricky fight than the previous guy. Because I don't know, his weapon attacks come out super fast. However, there is still openings to kind of go in for the poke, jab, grab combo. So we just kind of go from there, do some heat action, and then yada yada yada. So like Shinada, like he's just really OP in 1v1s. Because like if you once you know the openings, just kind of poke, pop, boom. Okay, they can't do anything about it. And if you go for like a normal full combo, they'll probably block your heavy attack. And that just kind of gets rid of your grab combo capabilities. So you just kind of go from there. You go for a little cheat <laughs> However, I will say, I, know, I guess one disappointing aspect of Shinada is that most of his fights are just kind of like, I don't know, just kind of jobbers. Like, you know, like, oh, here's a guy. Fight him. <laughs> you know, and the guys are usually pretty easy. I don't kind of wish Shinada got more hype fights. But to be fair, these fights aren't necessarily bad, per se. But, you know, just kind of like, eh, whatever. And they're fun because you're fighting them as Shinada. Because Shinada is just really capable in these 1v1s. Like, I mean, you'd think because they have a weapon, they'd be a little hard, and, you know, eh, perhaps, but with his pokes, nothing gets past them. So here, I'm going to let my boy kind of shoot up, shoot this guy a little bit, and then I'll go for a full combo there, but I'm going to consider it for a little bit. Then I'm going to go in for the kill, baby. <laughs> Isn't it funny how Majima copies this animation in uh, Yakuza 0? It sure is. However, uh, I mean, I shouldn't be talking too much smack on Zero here because uh, Shinada actually copies some animations from <laughs> from uh, Yakuza 3. However, those animations don't show up till later, so I'm not going to talk about them. So here we have a knife fight, and on a weird little tangent, but I fought this guy in the climax battles, and I think the music for him in the climax battle fits better. Like, it's like the standard boss fight theme or whatnot, but... I don't know, like, this guy's menacing. I don't think, like, this, like, kind of, I don't know, free, jolly, like, 
battle music works for him, per se. I don't know. It do I don't think it really fits him. I don't know, the climax battle has a more like menacing track to him, you know, he's a knife, he's like the dude, he's gonna betray you, yo! Oh yeah, I mentioned that Shinado's the GOAT of this game, and that's because I think his story is just absolutely like the most compelling, I don't know. Yakuza 5 does this weird thing with its characters where like, it, it's, it's, it, like, it takes a slower pace, but it's also because it's a, going a little bit more introspective like on the characters, like I don't know, Kiryu's story, like I don't know, they really spend a lot of time like with the, kind of his lonely situation, kind of like his struggles, like I mean his like dreams or whatever, and then for Saijima, like a lot of the other characters, and you know, it's like, hey, what are these guys, who are these guys, but they kind of like represent certain aspects of like, I don't know, Saijima's like plight or whatnot, they, they compliment him very well however with Saijima like the thing about him is that his hunting story oh yeah I forgot to mention I mean I did talk about how like the side quests really go in really like blend with the story really well like with Kiryu like I mean there's certain sections that do that really well but for Saijima like his hunting story is like more engaging like his main story like I don't know I mean like the hunting stuff is just really dope and then you get to Haruka, where like the side content like kind of contextualizes her idol life more. No, that's another thing. Like I don't know, some of the normal taxi stuff which Kiryu does like contextualizes the taxi stuff, and that's just a whole different type of like. That's just a lot of fun trivia. And we check this <laughs> sick stuff out.俺がそんなに嫌わな男かどうか確かめてみるんだな覚悟はいいな一つをああはい let's get into it so anyways, I'll talk about individual stories in Yakuza, like, I don't know, they, they, tend, they tend to strive more towards, like, I don't know, like, individual, like, character kind of studies, maybe, even? I don't know if i go that far, but they definitely feel more about the internal struggles. Like, Haruka is kind of, like, very much about, like, the internal struggles. Akiyama's more along for the ride, I don't know. Though he, ha he does have some great side quests, which kind of, like, give him some emotional depth or whatnot. But then we get to Shinada here, just a complete outlier in the entire like story of this game. But also one of the it's also its best part. <laughs> like, it's such it's just like such an engaging story that just comes out of nowhere. Anyways, I'm gonna take advantage of the fact that Daigo's going to heat mode to do a full combo. Something I don't do regularly with Shinada, so this is a nice plus. So here I'm kinda of varying up the heat action to deal the maximum amount of damage. Like I mean I did the one heat action where I slammed him against like the wall there, but then I moved him away from the wall a little bit to kinda of deal another heat action so I can deal the most damage. Here I'm just kinda of bidding out some attacks so I can actually get a little combo there. Pop, pop, it's over for Daigo. And the music is soaring. Yes, I'm playing the Japanese version to get that sweet licensed music. Let's go. And this time I actually have the audio, because I actually no damage this guy before. However, when I was recording it, I put headphones into my PS4 controller, and when you do that, the audio does not pick up on Elgato, so that was a crying shame, because I recorded this sick fight before, but without any audio, so I had to put in the music, like, unnaturally. So here, we have Shinada's huge group fight, and this could be tough, however, we got a few weapons, which aren't gonna help us much. <laughs> however, it does allow us to do this one little sick little heat action. So here I'm gonna try to, like, do heat action to build up my red heat gauge. And yeah, that's another thing. So this red heat gauge, it builds up when you, like, consistently do heat action. So every heat action you do builds that gauge up. However, killing enemies normally does not. So if you want to like build that heat gauge like quickly, don't kill enemies, don't like hit them with combos, prioritize building heat and doing heat actions. That's the way how you build the red heat thing. And the reason I want to do the red heat action here is because if I do it on a normal enemy, it'll scare the other enemies and that'll give me like, I don't know, passage to do kind of like a quick kill. Because I don't know. So there's like enemy, en enemy emotions matter a lot in this combat system because I don't know if you can scare an enemy and you go to hit them, it kills them in one hit no matter how big their health bar is. So you know, that's pretty sick. And in a big ass field like this, we can do the sick Shinada slide to kind of like get rid of them like Yeah. So after that, uh, I'm kind of at a loss. So on Oshinada here, if his health goes to red, it enters a QTE section where it immediately kills the boss fight. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna go to the red and activate that sick boss fight. And then the guitars start playing. Yeah! The 
the timing on that was amazing. Like, I don't know when the QT starts and he's like running and the guitar like riff is like going down and down and like, yeah, this song is awesome. And just this fight's like really dope, though. Hmm, I was gonna say something. So yeah, um, the red heat action is really useful. However, I do have some issues with like Yakuza 5's combat system. Like it has a lot of really neat ideas, though maybe not the most natural implementation of them. Like I don't know, the red heat gauge could be annoying because uh, I don't know. Sometimes you want to save that red heat gauge for a very specific enemy. However, when you have that red heat gauge like completely filled out, there's a certain heat action you can do. Like when an enemy is about to get up, I don't know for Kiryu and Saejima, it's like the headbutt. For Shinada here, he copies like Kiryu's entire flow from Yakuza from Yakuza 3 he copies Hell's Floor which was a feel the heat thing he could do in that game however if you have the red heat like filled you can't do that heat action you will be forced to do the red heat action so it's kind of like it's a little limiting in that sense also I should mention that my controller is just dying like I don't know like it's, it's having drift problems and I don't know like it's having this weird issue like if I move up sometimes it'll go to like a walking speed like I don't know like the sensitivity is like all messed up I really need to buy a new PS4 controller but hey I mean I I don't know with this game I've pretty much done a big no damage video for every single Yakuza game in this in like in the entire franchise which is insane so I don't think I'm gonna be touching that PS4 controller in a while I might be touching a PSP I'm not gonna get to that I'm not gonna get to that I'll get to that at the end of the video shut up so this game's like theme of like dreams oh wait never mind. i'm not gonna get onto that so anyways issues with the combat system so yeah there's like that and also there's like other weird issues like i don't know kiryu when he has like his heat gauge filled up you can't really taunt anymore because if you try to taunt you'll just go into like big super mode this isn't a huge issue it's kind of a stylistic issue i guess because i don't know sometimes when i have heat i want to taunt but i can't really taunt i can only go into red heat and there's no option to like not do that which is a shame and with akiyama he has like some weird issues like i don't know Akiyama can do a sick thing when he has heat. He can like, juggle enemies and all that. However, uh, sometimes Akiyama, I don't want to juggle enemies. I want to like run at them and do a heat action. However, the game will think I want to do like a juggle action, and then like it'll do this one animation I did not want to do when I have heat. So it's like, bruh, really? Like I don't know. If the game could find a way to like make you turn off certain sections of the game you don't want to like be dealing with, so you can do another thing, like that'd be nice. But you know, sometimes we can't get what we want. So anyways, with Shinada here, there's another weird issue. Like I don't know. So I mentioned how when an enemy's down, you can kick them down a lot. So you know, I mean, I'm like I mean, I'm fighting a boss fight. You know, I go like for the downing kicks. However, Shinada has a unique thing that when he's in heat mode, if you like uh, like kick twice you know do like a kick and then press triangle again he'll go for a tackle however sometimes you really don't want to go for a tackle certain boss fights can like immediately exit out of it and damage you in that exact moment so here we're going to pull out a katana to like take out this last guy however uh uh a little sluggish i wanted to be i wanted it to be a cool finish but i keep messing it up however it's, thankfully these weapons can block anyways so that is done sonos so yeah, like the tackles will come out a little, like a little too much. So and if there was like a way or a certain way to kind of like turn that off in like in the middle of combat, that'd be nice. You know, in the same way you can kind of like hold L2 to turn off heat actions. I wish there was a way to do that for like your red heat abilities because sometimes you don't want them. So here we're going to fight Baba as Kiryu. And I said that Baba versus Saejima wasn't exactly a good fit. And I'd say the same for Kiryu here, but it's the exact opposite reason for Saejima. Kiryu is too equipped to fight Baba. We are going to completely annihilate this little baby boy. Like, Baba just does not stand a chance against Kiryu. And to be fair, Kiryu is a monster in this game. He can stun lock, he can zero cycle, he got tiger drops up the ass, he... If you want to be mean with Kiryu, you can be mean, and I will be mean in some of these upcoming fights. Like, I mean, I was kind of taking advantage of Kiryu's abilities in like the in his first couple of fights, but in these next couple of fights, it's gonna get even more insane. So, oh, another sick thing you can do with Baba. So, I mean, you can kind of go for like a triple combo, and you know, for the th ooh finish it off with a tiger drop there but anyways with Baba you can go for like a triple combo and then like on your third hit like Baba will open up to do like a counter attack however your attack is faster than his counter attack so you'll hit him and then you can go for a grab combo to kind of negate his whole like you know counter to your attack it's like nice anyways here is a cool ass intro for a somewhat underwhelming fight I saw <laughs> So 
So yeah, Aizawa, like, in his very first fight against Kiryu isn't that tough. Like, his combos are somewhat limited. You know, like, a cool beginner fight. Here, he's, like, a little bit more capable, but not really. Like, Saijim is just gonna absolutely destroy him. However, he is still kind of a threat to watch out for. Cause some of his attacks can come out a little too quick. So, you know, you gotta be careful about that. And also, going for full combos is a little bit out of the question. Because he tends to block most of it. It's kind of like, there, I was only able to get one heavy attack in there. So, not really worth pursuing that idea. So, in the beginning, I kind of went for this thing where I just kind of hit him against the wall just because I thought it was cool. But yeah, cool thing you can do with Saijin is that when the enemy's getting up, you can like do like square, hold triangle to kind of hit him there. Now with some of the tricky boss fights, oh here's a cool heat action you can do. If an enemy's blocking, you can kind of break their block like that. And the way I, ni I, I initiate this is Aizawa is I pretty much go for a couple light attacks and then he's kind of left open blocking and in that brief moment I do a heat action which is pretty sick. Bop, bop. So here we're just gonna end it off with a quick like throw or whatnot. Like, I mean, look, I, I am limited against Aizawa with Saijima, but uh, I, Saijima is still kind of a beast, so I still was able to defeat him relatively easily. So here we have this sick-ass encounter, which has some questionable circumstances, but understandable circumstances nonetheless. And hey, these fights are hype. Watase, let's go. So here I'm going to show you just how mean you can be with Kiryu. So, I mean, you know, here I guess start off with a little combo to kind of throw him on the ground, a little heat action, but then we're going to get mean with it. Time for the zero cycles. So, what, what, okay, what I assume zero cycles mean, because I... Is that pretty much like it's a way to like defeat boss fights without ever letting them do anything per se. So if I were to say continue grabbing him from the ground every time he tried to get up, that would be a zero cycle. Oh, here I'm gonna take advantage of the fact that he's going to heat mode to do a full combo, grab attack, and then from there just kind of go crazy with it. So here I went into dragon mode because I don't know, in this Watase fight, I was like trying to think of cool ways to vary up the gameplay beyond just the zero cycle stuff here. So I don't know, what you do with Kiryu here is that if you do let's say like square square triangle grab combo, throw him on the ground, and then when he's immediately on the ground, if you like do that over and over and over, and it's like in his and it and and if his back is facing towards you, you can pretty much just like infinite him over and over and it's just like damn. So here I, I tried to like vary it up with another heat action. Like I thought if I picked him up from the ground, I would have access to a heat action. However, if you pick him up from the ground in like from his front, you don't get access to a heat action, which is very sad. So I'm just gonna do a couple of tiger drops. Drop kick, the only drop kick I've done this entire run. But hey, that drop kick looks sick, though it's not that useful. Let's go. What to say is down. So this fight is pretty cool and Saijima ha does have some options but those options are kind of relegated to use the charge attacks at certain moments but it is kind of a cool flowing fight where you watch for openings kind of exploit them when you can though your combos are a little limited no not not in the beginning though because like if he doesn't have heat you can kind of get a good couple openings in him so what you want is that drop kick when he does that drop kick he's open so when he doesn't have heat go for like this cool you know one like you know square triangle triangle and that'll pretty much solve your problems however once he enters heat that's going to be a different story and here just kind of abusing him on the ground yada 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 so here, once he enters heat mode, you can't really do the combos because he'll just block everything. So instead of doing that, just go for a charge attack, cool little attack, then run away from him. And kind of keep on your toes. He can drop that, because he can like drop that drop kick pretty quickly. So, you know, just kind of watch out for his tails and all that. And be prepared to like counter attack. Drop! So, I don't know, I don't really have much else to say on this guy. I mean, I don't know, you get to see his like booty cheeks in the cutscene, which is like, you know, funny and all that. You can laugh now. So here I'm kind of waiting for to do another heat action, just kind of to vary them up and deal more damage along the way. Ooh, that, that, that was a close one. So here we're fighting on top of the Majima building, which, I don't know, it's cool that to finally see it like completely constructed. I was just that was like one of the coolest things about the series of games just kind of seeing like Majima construction kind of like have that idea to build this building and then seeing it actually get built throughout the games oh just really dope like I don't know a world building concept however it's kind of sad that this area never is like explorable normally it's always like a combat area 
<laughs> so, you know, kind of sad. So here, I'm, this is actually the only old attempt I included, and it's because it is just absolutely monstrous. I completely demolished Saijima just by being utterly mean with Kiryu. So here, he's going to go for this grab combo, sets him up immediately in front of me. And then we're going to just bop heat action, which then we're going to grab him from the ground again and go for like the full combo again. Like just absolute no mercy whatsoever. Like, I mean, I, like, part of this is that I got lucky, and part of this is that this is just, I'm just, ooh, and then we go for the heat action, it's gonna reset him, and we're gonna grab him from the ground again, like, I could not do better than this if I tried, like, I already did, like, the best attempt against Saiji, you know, like, there's just no point, and here I'm not gonna go for the full combo again, because it's a little risky, instead we're just gonna go for that, and then from there we'll just do some heat stomps to get the heat at, get to go for the full dragon, and then we're gonna just absolutely end this fight, go for the grab, whoa, 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 and then we're just gonna stomp him out to get rid of his health bar and just move on to the cinematic, what a monstrous performance, and uh, fighting him is, so yeah, fighting Saijima is easy, fighting Kiryu is not, however, I still found a way to fight Kiryu, as you are about to see in the next clip. So yeah, Kiryu has a lot of tools to kind of screw over people, but Saijima does not have that many tools. So here we're going to go for like a full combo because in the beginning it works. However, later on it will work jack squat. From, from here on out, we're going to instead rely... Okay, so for when he's getting up on the ground, you can kind of go for that. However, from here on out, we're going to rely on grabs and running into Kiryu. And also heat action. So I'm going to try to build up my heat actions in order to build up my red heat so I can do my red heat attack where I slam his face on the ground. However, Kiryu kind of works like the bear. When he's in the middle of an attack, you can kind of rush in and boom, you don't get hit. However, if you attack him when he's like standing around normally, you could get screwed over. However, here, you are completely fine. Just kind of wait for him to like be at the end of his combo, charge in to kind of build up that heat. However, you know, grabbing him is more effectively. However, if you grab him too much, that like he'll like, you know, break out of your grab and if he breaks out of your grab too quickly he could attack you before you have a chance to block him so you know you don't want to rely on the grabs too much however you will need to rely on the grabs somewhat because it is like kind of the best damage you can deal with to him at the moment and also kind of get him on the ground because like the grabs are the only way to kind of get him on the ground however you don't want to throw him because if you throw him he'll like just recover from that so you don't want to do that so you still want to do like the square combo because that actually puts him on the ground if you succeed at doing the square combo and he doesn't break out of it so here we're just going to do the red heat action that's going to end the fight so yeah pretty smooth attempt given that we're facing the almighty kiryu and thankfully no no tiger drops no no nothing I don't know, the strategy I used against Kiryu in Yakuza 4 doesn't work here, however I found a new strategy that works very well here. So here we have the third Kanai fight, which is part of the finale of this game. And the finale of this game is just absolutely massive. Like, I mean, you have like a whole Kamurocho Hills level before this, and then you have this big city fight with the four protagonists. Like, yo, let's go. You get to choose like which character you get to fight as. Like, yo, let's go. Now, this group fight is reminiscent of the Tojo clan fight, as in the enemies have very low health bars. However, it is nowhere near as difficult as that fight, and I am eternally grateful for that. Now, the plan was to no damage the Kanai fight, which shows up after you beat up this group. However, and like, you know, ignore the group. It's like, damn, this group is going to be annoying, right? However, this group is really easy. So I decided, hey, let's just include him. Now, it did take a couple of attempps, but, you know, this group just wasn't as hard as I was expecting it to be. And I'm, I'm glad for that, actually, because it means I got to include them and kind of make this a little bit more of an official, like, kind of no damage. You know, like, beat up the group that kind of is supporting, yada, 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 yada. So here, we're just kind of taking out the stragglers and to kind of make Kanai show up and Kanai versus Kiryu <laughs> I mean Kiryu is just a lot more equipped to deal with anyone so it's just kind of very nice sick little drop kick there though you don't get to see the you know kickback so 
Now, Tiger Chops would be the funny way to do it. However, I stick to the, the parries because I know the timing for that better. And there, I thought I could do a heat action from his back, but I guess not. So instead, we're just going to go with combos. Whoosh. I don't know, my head's going a little blank at the moment, but I guess uh, I can go back to just how great Yakuza 5 is. I don't know, just something about this game is just so magical to me, like, I don't know, it's just like, it's like the type of thing which like this, like this series is never gonna like reach again. Like, it's just a game with a ton of content, all of it unique, all of it like fresh, and just also, I don't know, like, I mean, I mean, I started playing this game like as a Kiryu, right, doing the taxi stuff, but then like, you know, halfway through I'm playing as Shinana, like, I mean, I just like vaguely remember the stuff I did as Kiryu, like, you know, kind of like in an adventure type, like, it's just like, it's just like a massive, like, game, and I just, I, I mean, you know, to be fair, a game being massive isn't always a positive, sometimes like, massive games could be an absolute drag, I don't know, ask Ubisoft. <laughs> My relationship with Ubisoft isn't that negative. I actually enjoyed quite a few of their games. Like, I don't know, the Assassin's Creed games have been mostly fun. Like, I don't mean, one, two. I mean, one's very flawed, but I don't know, had some cool stuff in it. Two's dope. Brotherhood was cool. Revelations I beat in like four hours. <laughs> uh, I did not play three. Four is awesome. So, you know, I mean, I mean, Ubisoft, I do like their open world type games, though. I hear a lot of complaints that, like, they can drag and. I don't know, I hear that with some of these future games, those definitely drag on, but like, Yakuza 5 is a game that's like massive and always like, fun. It's just like, yeah, and here is my favorite Majima fight in the entire franchise. Like, I mean, you know, like, I mean, his fight in 3 is cool, his fight in 4 is dope, but this one is just all oh, amazing, man. Like, like, I mean, Majima has like fair openings, but he's still challenging, like he's fast, he has all these cool ass animations, the setting's awesome, the freaking Millennium Tower, and, you know, well, I mean, you might be thinking, hey, Sajima's slow, isn't he a little limited against Majima? Yeah, in Yakuza 4 he was, but here, you actually have some pretty solid openings to like, you know, actually beat him up, and Majima just has all these cool little phases, like he has a fucking phase where like, he summons like a billion of like, other of him, and, the, and his theme in this game is amazing, I, I mean, it used to be like my favorite like, rendition of Receive You, Though, I don't know. I'm kind of, like, rubbing off on that. Like, it's, like, top three. Like, this is, like, top three, like, remix of Receive You. Easily. I love this theme to death. The sick piano parts of the guitars. Like, yo. Yo, hype. Emotional. Like, just climactic. And also, another thing I love about Yakuza 5 is just that, like, it goes big. Because this is, like, just an absolute celebration of the entire franchise. Like, I mean, this one thing that started on the PS2, which, like, negotiated, like, nearly, like, risked its entire career. Like, we're, like, we reached this point of, like, with this amount of quality, this amount of polish. Like, mmm. And to be fair, like, I mean, I don't know, uh, 5, Ishin, and 0 all kind of give me that feeling. But, like, it's like, man, like, look how far we've come, man. Like, it's just so inspiring. And, I mean, Yakuza is still making a lot of really good stuff. I mean, 7, it was really good, though. I'm, I'm kind of coming off of it a little. Like, I don't know, some of its flaws are a little more apparent to me now with, like, some of its game design. Like, there, there's a lot that 7 could improve, though. It is still really good, and I like it a lot. And it's probably still my favorite Dragon Engine game. Even though Dragon Engine kind of took away the fun arcadey feel of some of these uh, previous games. But still, though, this fight, amazing, amazing fight. I don't know, my strategy for it is like, I mean, in the, okay, so Majima has this one attack where he kind of jumps around and flails. And it ha it's just like really like floaty and kind of has this big, big opening for you to like, f like faint your first punch and then charge up like your, like, like faint the square and then triangle triangle like charged up you can hit him and knock him down to the ground and it's awesome and also uh like for some of his other combos just like at the end of those combos just kind of grab him and then you'll you'll be good and then kind of do some heat actions there do some red heat actions there yada 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 so here here's the final baba fight and i think shinada is a perfect match for him because he's limited enough for this guy to be kind of threatening but he also still has a lot of tools to like have a fair fight so here we kind of go for the sick one two punch at the very beginning to knock him to the ground going for some heat actions go for the full grab combo and then after that we're just gonna go for a couple kicks kind of develop another heat action and just kind of <laughs> we're just gonna go from there just here I kind of messed up my little strat there, however, oh he entered heat mode, I could have taken better advantage of that, but you know, whatever, I still knocked it onto the ground, and here we're going to copy Kiryu's, like, uh, Yakuza 3 animation, and this, uh, this, this music, awesome, uh, Baba's a really dope fight, and I think he excels the most here, 
And well, to be fair, this is like his final fight, so they better make him like the best here. Just really dope stuff. So yeah, Yakuza 5's finale is just awesome like in general because it's like you have all these separate stories which kind of seem like they don't connect that much but then in the finale they all come together one way like all the other characters come in like it just feels absolutely massive um, yakuza 4 like that entire finale took place on the top of a helipad and to be fair there's nothing exactly wrong with that but like here you have all these different locations you have all these different like locations like the scale of this just on a whole nother level like, oh, just this game just pushes so much forward. And I don't think it's all spec, skep, skep, skep. How do you say that word? Skep, s spectacle. Like, there is some depth here. Like, there is, like, some good, like, encounters and whatnot. Like, I mean, Baba, like, his character's, like, a little weird, though. I do think there's, like, some cool thematic stuff with him. I don't know, I guess one thing which Yakuza 4 has is that Akiyama's final fight is a lot better in that game. However, uh, the fights for all these other characters are better here. Like, Saijima's battle here is way better than the one he had in Yakuza 4. Kiryu's battle here is a lot better than, than the one he had in Yakuza 4, though. The one he had in 4 was pretty cool. But the one... Okay, so here, uh, Baba could have, like, screwed me over and dealt damage. Anyway, check this out. That is the only time I do the grab combo. The grab counter, and then that is the reason why I don't do it more often, because enemies tend to break out of it anyways. Kind of a kind of a suck ass thing. There, like I mean, if you grab, if you get, if you use a certain like equipment item, you can kind of negate enemies breaking out of grabs. But I didn't really need that, so we're just gonna end it off with a cheeky taunt and end the fight. Oh yeah, did I? Oh, anyways, he, this fight is horrible. Ah! I don't know, one reason it's horrible is Kana is a persistent dude. Like, I mean, you're just trying to take out enemies. Yeah, I equipped that item. I need it. So here we're going to start off with the Chi, like red heat attack to kind of take him out there. So horrible things about this fight. The arena suck ass to the max. Because I don't know, one thing I just hate about this arena. This is just easy, like horrible, invisible walls. I mean... Oh, you see that group of bodies there? Like, oh, can I run over there to the other side of the stage? Nope, those group of bodies are an invisible wall. Hey, can I run between, like, this lamppost and, like, this, like, tile here? Nope, there's an invisible wall there. I mean, you're trying to run around, dodge enemies. Like, I mean, you do not want invisible walls. So you're trying to be, like, run around. To, uh, the, oh, you thought you could run there? Nope, invisible wall. Like, ugh, dude. Like, I mean, ah, uh, it just sucks so much. They, like, this arena just has all these, like, weird little boundaries that like, clip you in certain weird places. When you're trying to run away from this guy, you're using your combos to get momentum away from him, and then, like, the terrain is just, like, screwing you in weird-ass places. You do not want that. Look at that. Why didn't I dodge through that? Why did I get stuck there? Like, this arena design just, eh, no, no. I don't want to talk about this fight no more, but uh, actually, I I'll talk about this fight a little more. So, I came fully prepared double health bars with all like my stat boosts and all that because like this dude does not deserve any mercy we have to annihilate this entire group so in the beginning do that red heat action the red heat action kind of scares enemies however you can't really take advantage of it too much because can i get up super fast and also some of the other enemies are just quick on their ass and will just take you out if you try to take out some of the guys who are scared for their lives with like the purple health bar so it's kind of like damn damn so you want to build up heat, you want to do this attack where you take out three guys at once. It's finicky, but once you get the timing down for it, it's pretty much like your bread and butter. Like, it has to be your bread and butter to take out the crowd. And also, just watch out for Kanae, because that dude is quick, that he's fast, he's just horrible to deal with, he's on his feet. And then once you have him one-on-one, -on -one, it's a... Not my best attempt, I will say, because I was trying to be super cautious, because, you know, it is just horrible to take out an entire crowd, because that crowd is, like, most of the challenge. Because once you take out the crowd, you 1v1 with Kanai, who's not that hard. However, fail this Kanai attempt, you have to redo that entire crowd. So I'm just playing it super cautiously. Like, it's sloppy, but, like, hey, I did it. <laughs> I did the no damage, but it is very sloppy and dragged out. My head has gone empty again. I am blank with nothing to say, so I will restart the topic and uh, 
Uh, so I mentioned in my Yakuza 4 video that since like I don't know the game's kind of split up on so many protagonists, like I don't know each protagonist doesn't exactly get as many satisfying boss encounters as some of the previous games. You know, like in Yakuza 3, Kiryu has like you know nine or ten different boss fights. You know, like cool. While you know, while in Yakuza 4 they had to split up like ten different boss fights to draw across like four characters, so it's kind of like okay, each one gets like one or two, maybe three. You know, we'll get like some repeated offenders here and there for variety. You know, yada yada yada, and then like most of the boss fights kind of shoved right at the end of the game. While Yakuza 5 kind of suffers from from a similar issue, however, nowhere near to the same extent. Because Yakuza 5 also has the finale chapters. So like I don't know, in Yakuza 4 there was like four protagonists and you know each each of them got like four chapters. However, like the final protagonist got like his chapters are pretty much like the end of the game and then there was like a finale chapter to kind of be the final part of the game. While here, each like I don't know, we have like we have five protagonists, you know, two like three of them get full on four chapters, while two of them get like two each. However, one thing to consider about five is that each of these chapters are much longer than a lot of the stuff in four. Like four's chapters could pass by really quickly, while here they're like they go by like some kind of slowly. Like there's just a lot more to do in the main story. Like Akiyama like only really gets two chapters, but in those two chapters he does like I think a lot more than what he did in four. Like in four of his chapters, like in Yakuza 4. And also, like, there's just a lot more going on. Because not only do we have those chapters, we have four extra chapters, which are just the finale by themselves. So it's not just, like, four chapters of a protagonist. It's, like, four chapters across all the protagonists. And to be fair, those, they aren't, like, that long, but, like, stuff happens in them. Like, I mean, we get to fight Baba again. We got to fight Aizawa again. We get another level. You know, we, like, figure out stuff in the plot. Like, stuff comes, like, on the, I think, like, that way of handling like, stuff comes together a lot more satisfyingly. Anyways, here is one of the best final boss fights in the entire series. Let's go. Man, aesthetically, this is just one of the most like pleasing fights in the entire series. I don't, I don't know how to describe it. But I just love like the intro where it freeze frames and like there's like you see like the freaking sweat particles like flying in midair, like that slow mo effect. Awesome, and like just returning back to the Tojo clan for a fight is amazing. Anyways, we're gonna keep, we're gonna use these couches to like demolish it, and we're gonna start doing some zero cycle strats. So you know, just square, square, triangle, pop, pop, pop for Aizawa here, baby. And here he's gonna enter heat mode, so we're gonna take advantage of that with a full combo. But I'll just like this fight is just amazing. I mean, to fair, I'm honestly considering like this may actually be my favorite final boss fight in the series. Like, I mean, it's honestly a toss up between this or Ishin's final boss fight, and it's just like mm, so good. But I don't know. I mean, like, there's like ways to argue about this between five or Ishin. I mean, zero kind of gets into like this argument too, but like, I don't know, with zero, like. I don't know if it's as hype, but like it is very, very hype. So here we're gonna smash uh, cross <laughs> the X button for a little bit. So I don't know, like one issue which like I guess I had with Yakuza 5, I mean honestly I'm, I'm coming off a lot more positive with Yakuza 5, like I'm starting to see like the positive in story a lot more. Like there is a lot to appreciate with this game, like the more introspective like narrative with like its characters, I mean like, I don't know, like the twists in this game are nowhere near as like buffoony as like some of the stuff in 4, even though 4 also has a lot of merits, I think this game Honestly, a lot better for the most part. But uh, one issue I had with like this game, and a lot of an issue a lot of people have with this game is Aizawa here, as in he just kind of shows up at the end, and it's he just kind of shows up out of nowhere at the end, and it's supposed to be like this big climactic final guy. And I was just kind of having trouble processing that. Like, hey, shouldn't we develop this a little bit more? But I don't know. Like, re like I don't know, looking at this scene, I don't know. Like the way Aizawa acts as like the final boss doesn't really contradict the character he, he was established as before. I mean, like. He was like angry at Kiryu. Hey, check this out. I teleported the sofa, baby. Eyes was gonna take it away because he's a no fun Grinch. But, anyways, 
I don't know, the way he acts here as like the final boss doesn't really contradict the character he was established as in the beginning. I mean, he wasn't a fan of Kiryu. I mean, he was he like he was kind of like he was kind of like, "Hey, yo, Kiryu, why did you abandon the Tojo Clan?" And then at the end of the game here, it's kind of coming back to that thing like, "Hey, Kiryu, why did you abandon like the Tojo Clan?" Like, I mean, it's, you know, it kind of fits into like that theme again, though. I don't know, the issue is that it kind of comes out of nowhere. Like, I mean, in retrospect, it all does kind of make sense. Because, uh, okay, so, like, Morigana and Aizawa were both traitors to, like, the Tojo clan. That's, like, the part which, like, we missed, pretty much. Like, they were both in cahoots from the very beginning. It's just that Morigana kind of outed himself at the end of Kiryu's chapter, while Aizawa kind of waited up until this point. So like that big the big plan which like the old man with cancer had it involved both of these guys from like the very start so that kind of helped me like come to terms with it a little bit more though it still isn't the greatest twist and Aizawa isn't exactly the greatest villain because I mean I do kind of wish like he kind of had a little bit more development and even then like how the hell did Morigana die honestly like even that's like a little bit suspicious like I don't know I mean there's just certain details which kind of like hey maybe we should have had a scene here or two to kind of develop it a little bit more but you know regardless of that even if I thought like uh Aizawa here was like a bad character which I don't really think he is per se just kind of a bit of an underwhelming one but not exactly poorly written I'd say it just kind of comes at the end a little too rushed this fight is still fantastic like the, the QTEs like the montages like oh man and just like the setting like the music battle for the dream all oh, this theme is just amazing triumphant it just feels like the end of a saga like ah! and like the way it just kind of builds up to like you know like this dude wants to beat up like Kyrie and like, like legacy dreams yeah ah! and this dude's like heat mode look at the pink stuff look at, like the helixes that show up when he punches it and all that it looks awesome like his tattoo of meat like the black fish like, ah! I don't know there's actually a lot of like similarities to like Nishiki I don't like this dude's like Hidor is very similar to like Nishiki's Hidor in like the original game. Like Kiwami 1 changes it to like a light blue, which is like, eh, okay, I guess. But you know, his Hidor in the original game was kind of this like pinkish reddish thing with like some helix formations, while Aizawa has this same kind of Hidor and he has the fig on his back! Ah! And then we like kick him out, like it's snow covered, it's beautiful, man. Like, oh, this is just such an awesome fight. <laughs> Like, I mean, if you had to make a fight to, like, end the series in, like, a climactic note, this is the fight, like, I'd want. Like, the only issue is maybe that, like, I don't know, his fighting style is, like, a little repetitive, but even there, like, his combos are sick as hell. Like, they took, like, his really simple fighting, like, combos from, like, before and just made him into, like, this huge, like, 10, like, hit combo. Like, oh, it's just so dope. And, I don't know, I mean... He has like good uh, parry timings, and uh, if you learn them, also good tiger drop timings. He's just like he's cool. He's like challenging, but once you learn him, he's like actually fun. It's like yo, let's go. And he also has, I actually has health. Like I don't know one thing which I was kind of annoyed with the certain Yakuza boss fights is that like you just beat him up too quick. Like, I don't know like in Yakuza Zero, like I mean enemy has two health bars, they might as well just be gone like soon enough because I don't know you just absolutely destroy them if you're actually like playing the game like to destroy. While here like you actually have like a nice meaty enemy to be the final boss. But, like let's go, yes! I, just, I absolutely adore this fight to death. And I guess arguing uh, this fight against like Ishin's, like I don't know, Ishin's boss fight has like I made better music, and also like it has more variety in his phases. However, the second phase is just it's annoying. So even on on like that merit, I think I might prefer this. So I don't know, but to be fair, it's a toss up though. I'm I'm still gonna stick with Ishin for being like the best final boss fight in the entire series, just for like it still has an amazing setting. It's still like a great fight, and the combat system. I'd say is better than 5, though I do like 5 as a game more. It's just like, mmm, just... Both fights are just fantastic and pinnacles of, like, the entire series. Though I'd say, like, for story purposes, like, the best, like, like, you know, the, the most emotional fight, or, like, the best, like, I don't know, narrative final boss would probably still go to, like, Yakuza 1, just because, like, that whole, like, construction there. And also, it also benefits a lot from like Zero and Kiwami 1 existing because they added a lot more characterization to the final boss fight which just makes it all the more powerful but it was still like a powerful well set up fight in the original like first game so just like man Yakuza they're like good games man 
did I talk about my strategy at all during this? No, I didn't. Let me talk about that. So what I do is, okay, so Aizawa has some really good, like, parries. Like, when he runs into you, you can parry that. When he, like, does a little combo and he does like, a little shoulder barge into you, you can parry that. And then after that, you can... And then, like, I in the beginning, I did, like, the red heat attack to kind of put him off. But then afterwards, I want to continue doing heat actions in order to build up the red heat action, heat, red heat thing again. Because there's, like, two different red heat actions. Oh, by the way, I'm Hatsune Miku right now. I'm fighting Noah Moan. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory, so I don't really need to explain it. However, I did get the double health bar so I can build up my heat faster, so I can kill Amon's heat faster. Because if she gets heat, she is absolutely going to damage me. And I do not need to be damaged. I want to do no damage. Oh, yeah. Also, if you notice the yellow health bar slightly going down, that is not damage. That's just because if you get two health bars, like the yellow one will just go down over time. But you don't act... That's not me actually taking damage. That's just the health bar slightly going down. All right? Just cleared that up. So, anyways, back to Aizawa. So... I mean, there's two red heat actions you can do with Kiryu. One when you have full health, and one when you have no health. So, pretty much, I want to do both of them. So, I do the, the first one with, like, full health. And then, at the end, I, like, kind of delete my health a little bit. So, I can get access to that other heat action. The, the other red heat action. And also, to get access to another red heat... And also, get access to another heat action. Because, like, there's different ground heat actions you can do if you have full health. And when you have red health. Like, if you have full health, you can do, like, scrape his face on the floor. You can stomp his face. But when you have no health, you can just beat him to a pulp. So, to get the maximum amount of damage, I kind of did both. And then, my other strategy is just the zero cycle. Where he's on the ground, I go square, square, triangle, grab, throw him, square, square, triangle, grab. And in the beginning, I kind of wanted to use all the couches in the room to do heat actions. But I kind of messed it up. Because, I don't know, one thing to, when you're doing the zero cycle is don't immediately go for a heat action if, like, you just stepped off of a heat action. Because, like, you know, the game, like, takes a little bit of time to register, like, you doing another heat action. I don't know, you can't do, like, heat actions immediately one after the other. There's, like, a bit of a waiting period. So, you know, if, like... So it's just weird. Anyways, here is so much more, like the concert battle you do with uh, Moan, and I, I swear, this is easy mode. Like, okay, look at these inputs. Th that's easy mode. Why is Amon playing on easy mode? I looked up like like videos of like her fight online, and it looked way harder. But why why is mine so easy? Like, okay, I did this in premium adventure on hard difficulty. But, when I was doing all of Haruka's side content, like, I did some of her concert battles, like, in Premium Adventure, like, on easy, just to kind of breeze through. Oh, yeah, that's another thing. In order to reach Noah Moan, I thought you only had to do the sub-stories, and then I was told, oh, you have, to do, you have to do the dance battles, too. So, like, okay, I did the dance battles. It's, like, a little side content thing with, like, Haruka and some high school friends. But then, I was told, oh, no, 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 you also had to do all of the work missions. And I have done... None of the work missions. So I was like, oh, oh no. Like, I mean, I didn't think I'd be able to get this video out right now. So it's like, damn, what, what am I gonna do? And then I realized, hey, what if I do all the work missions but then just quit them? Would that count towards progress? And it does. So pretty much what I do is I enter a work mission and then I just like choose to like quit the mini game and then it'll say and then like I'll fail it per se like I won't get any experience but it will count as completed like towards my work mission so I can just keep doing that with like almost all of them and then I can you know get to a moment because I did all the work missions even though I just quit most of them however you can't exactly quit all of them you can only quit like the mini game type ones like when you're singing when you're doing a handshake event you can't quit the ones where there's a lot of dialogue like those you pretty much have to go through the entire thing you can't quit certain like special mini game ones like there's ones where you're like on a talk show and you have to choose like answers right or wrong you can't skip that there's one where you have to run because people like it when girls run you can't skip that you have pretty much have to do it so those you have to do, but then like most of them you can kind of skip them. And like the thing is, why am I being so harsh towards Haruka's like work missions? Well, they're all they're pretty good actually. Like I mean, some of them like some of the concerts get a little repetitive, but like I mean, I, I like a lot of the interviews. There's a lot of good writing and contextualizes Haruka's like I don't know idol business. It's really good. Now why don't I like him? The handshake event. <laughs> why is there so many of them? It's such a simple, stupid mini game. I feel like a dang monkey, like playing it over and over again. Like hold, hold square, but don't hold it too long. It's not something you need like ten or twenty of those. Like ah, oh, they just pad out like her list so much with those handshake events. Like I don't. This game normally does such a good job with like 
keeping a nice variety, but the handshake events just drags it all down, down, down. Like the rest of our activities are really fun, but also I've already done all of them on PS3, so I wasn't exactly raring to do them all over on PS4 because of the handshake events, because ah, just screw those events, man. Just, ugh, they're repetitive. Speaking of repetitive, these Amon fights, I do not like them. I do not like them at all. And Kazuya Amon is uh, just... Mm. So... <sighs> I'll start with the individuals. Kazuya Amon, he blocks. He blocks a lot. <sighs> People say that enemies in Yakuza 3 block a lot. I don't agree with that. However, if I did agree with that, I would treat Yakuza 3 like I treat Kazuya Amon. Because this dude just blocks so much. Like, there's no fun way to tackle this guy. Like, the most fun way I've seen to tackle this guy is to, like, tiger drop some of his combos. But that's a little inconsistent because he also has a slidey attack he can kind of do with, like, no real, like tells or anticipation for i mean at least none that i've noticed and it's just like Ugh. like if you don't spam this guy like i'm doing right now he can do some really annoying things he can like run into you he can do like a shinata dash attack which has very little like timing or tells there, there's a word for this like i don't know no real like tells i'm just gonna go with tells but there's a better word for this like when boss fights against it, like tell you to anticipate something with their movements i don't know there is a better word for this but I don't know, if you don't like spam Kazuya here, like he do some very annoying things. So like playing him fairly is not really much of an option. Because I don't know, if, even if you play him fairly, he doesn't give you any good openings except for like tiger drop stuff. Like if you dodge behind him and do a combo, nope, he'll just turn around and block it. Oh, I mean, even doing tiger drop doesn't deal that much damage anyway. I mean, the only real other thing you can do is just do heat actions, which in the beginning I, I, I was doing. I was doing a lot of different little heat actions, but then afterwards I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna like stick to doing the well, heat action where he breaks your guard and you just do that. I'm just gonna continue doing that because it's like the safest thing to do because like I can just hit him a bit, then go into blocking and he'll hit me and try to like break me. So I'll just do that. Like the worst thing that could happen is that he'll just do his combo without doing his heavy attack and grab me. Like he does it at one point in this fight, but his grab Grabs don't deal damage, and I was able to break out of it pretty easily. So, you know, there's that. I mean, he's like, at least he's easier to deal with than like the Kazuya and Yakuza 4, but the Kazuya and Yakuza 4 was more fun because I was actually like doing cool stuff. Here, this is just me like mindlessly spamming him because there's just no real fun way to tackle him. Also, I didn't unlock the Tiger Drop Akiyama because I didn't feel like it. And even then, I even if I did unlock it, doing the Tiger Drop strap, I, I wouldn't want to do it. Like, I mean, I, I prefer this strat, even though this strat is just boring. This fight is just boring in general. He's like a copy of Akiyama, but he also has some other moves that make it more annoying. It's just like, ugh, man, just, ugh. Like, the Kazuya in 4 is harder, but also he doesn't have any, nowhere near the amount of health this one has. So he's, like, harder, but he's also fair and doesn't waste your time. This guy, like, his gimmick is just like, ugh. Like, it, his gimmick is nothing. He just has a buttload of health. Like, buttload of blocking, it just takes forever to take him down. Just absolutely boring ass fight. An absolute downgrade from like his previous encounters in Yakuza 2 and Yakuza 4. Like his Yakuza 2 fight, he was wearing, he was he had axes and all that. And you know, when, in order to fight him in Yakuza 2, you had to be fully upgraded. So like the axes, like, you know, you could actually block him and all that. Like. You know, sick, awesome, you know, like, I'm down with that aesthetic. And then in Yakuza 4, he was, like, like nearly impossible unless you infinite him. But, you know, like, infiniting him was, like, kind of cool and fun and skillful and actually required you to be, like, good at the game. This, ah, just, like, mm, monkey, monkey, mm, mm, mm. I'm vibrating my teeth. I don't know how I'm doing that. I don't know if the mic is picking up like the vibrations happening in my teeth. It's like a dentist appointment. I don't know. Man, like what what else do I even talk about? Like 
I don't know, his boss fight theme is just like the normal boss fight theme, but to be fair, Yakuza 4 also did this, but Yakuza 4's like normal boss fight theme was better. Rebellions is a banger. This theme is alright, but it's not not as much of a banger as Rebellions, to be honest. Like, Yakuza 5's soundtrack overall is fantastic. I don't know, it has like this certain sound to it, like on the certain like direction they went with, with like a lot of guitars, a lot of like drums, I don't know, like there's a certain like production quality to it that I just absolutely adore, but I do not know how to explain it. Like, there's definitely like a lot of similar motifs throughout all these tracks and i adore it like there's just so many great tracks like i don't know like most of the tracks they use for like the big group fights like kiryu's big group fight has this amazing track with this amazing guitar shinada has like the one with the great riff like akiyama's final boss fight is kind of suck ass but his theme awesome the guitars dope Battle for the Dream, super, super emotional, cool ass like theme. Uh, the Victory Road theme is also amazing, but every time it plays, you don't actually get to hear it in completely because every enemy you face in the Victory Road is piss easy. So that is a damn shame that they made such a banger, which you're not even gonna be able to fully listen to. Anyways, here's Gyro, Giro, who cares? So this fight isn't that bad as long as you have the Tiger Drop. It's pretty fun. It doesn't take too long, and also I'm fully powered up as Sajima, so I'm just going to destroy him. But honestly, not too bad of a fight if you're like prepared for it and like learn his Tiger Drop times. Because you know, Sajima's Tiger Drop timings like really weird. They're like kind of slightly delayed compared to Kiryu's Tiger Drop timings, and they're certainly delayed compared to the Komaki Parry timings. So it's kind of weird. However, you know, I don't know. It's actually kind of safe, which is cool. However, I'm going to try to throw him, but he does not allow me to do that. But it doesn't really matter because in the end, we're just going to do that, grab it, and also, uh, I don't know, you may be wondering, why am I throwing him so much? Why am I not doing any heat action? Because the throwing thing is not only quicker, it deals more damage than the heat actions. I have the suspicion that these Amones actually take less damage from heat actions. Because, I don't know, I mean, I do like a big-ass heat action, and for some reason it doesn't deal that much damage. However, this one will deal some good damage, and it'll take care of all these clones he summoned. Like, these clones can get problematic. Like, if you, like, meander too long, you'll just keep summoning more and more and more of them, and it gets troublesome. And we still have that extra one, however, I'm not going to try to take him out, because I want to focus on taking out Gyro more before he gets the funny idea to summon more of them. So I'm just going to keep Tiger dropping him. However, in this game, it's called the Tiger Dragon Drop, or the Dragon Drop, I don't know. Drag and drop. <laughs> Anyways, we're just gonna end him with a quick tackle. So yeah, this fight's uh, probably mm, the best of the bunch. I mean, I don't know. He's just kind of and I'm just tiger dropping kind of. I don't know. Honestly, I think my favorite might be Sango if he didn't have that awful third phase, which I have to do an awful strike. <laughs> he stuttered. So anyways, here, we're just going to play a Shinada. And here, here is something which I didn't do with any of the other boss fights because I didn't know it existed. Because I didn't really need to do this with any, with any of the other boss fights until this guy. But for this guy, that little, like, I don't know, like, zero cycle is absolutely essential to completely avoid the third phase. You know, the first and second phase are like, I don't know, Amon has, like, a big-ass weapon. And, you know, like... It's like, it's, it's this dangerous to approach him, however, he does have clear openings to kind of poke at him. That's just the beauty of Shinada, like, no matter, like, who he's facing, like, if he's facing someone who has, like, a nice attack that takes a long while, he has an opening to attack and take advantage of him, like, just absolutely wonderful. And, well, this new strat which I'm using, which is, like, kind of hitting him while he's on the ground, is also just very useful as well. So, you know, just wonderful, wonderful little fighter. Even though he's not as capable as Kiryu, he is still immensely capable. So, the first two phases of this fight, honestly, pretty nice. Like, I mean, the weapons have nice openings. He's still kind of a threat, so you have to keep your distance and watch out. But he's not that hard. Honestly, I might even go as far to say that he's easy if you know what you're doing. I mean, to be fair, you can kind of say that about most Yakuza games. But then he enters his third phase where he copies, like, Saijima's trainer, who just is horrible. Like, I mean, when you're fighting him as Saijima, he's not that bad, but for no damage, eww! That's the thing, like, the fight is really easy if you're fighting him, like, normally, you know, taking damage every time he shoots the umbrellas at you, but fighting him for no damage, no, 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 no. So, what I'm going to try to do is try, I'm going to skip that phase, and you're going to see how, because you're going to spend, like, two, two minutes staring at the exact same animations, playing over and over again, because it is a very repetitive thing that I do. It's not the thing which like some other people do, because uh, what I've seen some other people do is they would just spam like square, triangle, square, triangle, square, triangle, and, like, you know, 
and they won't really like, get anywhere per se. Like what will happen is that they'll just spam square triangle, square triangle, and the triangle will always be breaking their guard, but it won't really do anything. Like, they'll maybe get a grab combo here and there, but they'll just keep that going until the boss fight dies. And like that is a very strenuous and difficult thing to do. My strat is easier to do, but it also is very tedious to look at because, okay. Here's what I'm gonna do. From this heat action, I'm gonna go behind him and do the grab combo. Now, from this, I'm gonna have enough heat to do the heat action where I pretty much do Kiryu's animation. Kiryu's animation is immensely long and it doesn't deal that much damage because I keep repeating over and over again. So, this is how the rest of the fight is gonna turn out. I'm just gonna get behind him, do the grab combo, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna have enough heat to pretty much like do this like heat action. Now, I'm pretty sure the only reason this strat is available to me is because I have these double health bars which allow me to build up heat faster, but nonetheless, it's useful for skipping that so stupid, horrible third phase, but it is very tedious and boring <laughs> to look at. It's pretty much just a replay of like my Sango fight in Yakuza 4, because I also adopted a very cheap strategy, even though I really didn't need to adopt a cheap strategy in Yakuza 4. I just adopted it because I thought it was funny, but here, I need to do this, because fighting that third phase is just, Egh. no, no thanks, no thanks whatsoever. The head has gone empty once again, however, uh, maybe I should describe that third phase since you're never going to see it. So, Sango here just kind of becomes like a god or something, and he starts floating around. However, when he floats around, he's like, you can't hit him at all. He has like iframes or whatever, and he summons these umbrellas, which you can't block by yourself. You need to summon a weapon. However, the weapon combos aren't as strong as like your normal combos. However, certain weapons are strong. However, you need to craft them, and I did not spend any time crafting them, and I do not plan on spending time on crafting them. Just because I am not. I just don't want to. So here, we're just going to go with this annoying strat. So anyways, I guess I'll just talk about something else. Uh, did I mention uh, Daigo's amazing boss fight theme in this game? So yeah, I played the Japanese release for that sick OG licensed music. However, the theme that they replaced it in in the Western release is still awesome. Like, it's like this like... Like, it, it sounds amazing as well, however, I prefer the license theme because, I don't know, both of these themes, like, I don't know, scream bromance to me. Like, I don't know, like, I mean, the English theme is, like, a little bit more manly while, like, the license song is a little bit more, like, heartfelt. Like, you know, like, we're gonna fight for our dreams. Like, yo, let's go. While, like, the replacement is a little bit more of a, like, you know, like, mm, we're gonna, like, it still has some of that feeling, but it isn't as strong. So I do prefer the licensed music, I think it fits better, but the uh, replacement's pretty awesome. Anyways, here is Joe Amon, and this guy is quite painful as well, but because he pretty much like has super armor the entire fight, so your only strategy is like tiger drop. However, I avoided doing the tiger drop thing because he, he can do quick step attacks like immediately without any like tells or like... Yeah, without any tell, so it's like, you know what, screw you, we're going for the zero cycle. The Nadia moans, get the zero cycle. So for this entire fight, we're just gonna do this. So it's just straight two or three minutes of me just going square, square, triangle, crack it, crack it, crack it, crack it. Listen to the sound, listen to the sound. That's it, that's what we're gonna be doing for the rest of this. So yeah, I just, I don't know. The Amon's in Yakuza 4 were a lot better. Like Kazuya Amon's like a lot better. Like you know, he has he doesn't have he doesn't have that much health, but he doesn't all, but he's also a lot harder and more on your feet. But he also rewards you for actually like being good at the game by you know dealing more damage and all that. You have to be skillful to fight him. While the Kazuya Amon in this game is just a tedious drag, which just takes forever, doesn't require much skill. I mean, maybe there's some things you can do to require more skill, but it's just like just not fun. And then Gyromon, he's alright in this game. I don't know, Gyromon and Yakuza 4 use pretty much just kind of a grab fest, kind of manage your heat well, you know, do stuff well. I guess maybe Gyromon in 4 had more variety to him, but I don't know, Gyromon in this game is alright. Even though, you know, maybe he's alright because he's easy. And then we got to Sango Amon, which, uh, I definitely say that his fight here is better, but then the third phase comes in and it kind of negates that. I don't know, like, I mean, to be fair, Sango Amon in 4 was pretty tedious. Like, I mean, his first phase was tedious. The second phase was a little fun, but to be fair, I found a tedious way to get around. I mean, his, Sango's second phase is fun. His first phase is not in Yakuza 4. In Yakuza 5, his first two phases are fun, but then his third phase is so bad that you pretty much need to make, like, the second phase not fun. So, there's that.
And then there's Joamon here, where pretty much the only strategy here is Tiger Drop. Maybe there's a way to do Kamaki parries and do sick combos, but I do not know, man. Because I don't know. Uh, Amon in Yakuza 4, there was a lot of fun ways to deal with him, and it was just a really fun, cool, sk skillful fight. While here, it's just like, we're just gonna do the Zero Cycle. I mean, hey. I mean, you know, we might as well do the Zero Cycle on an entire boss, and why not do it on the boss fight with apparently the most health? So let's... Yeah, let's just end this right here, right now. So yeah, that was my video. Thanks for watching. And with this, we have no damage to all the boss fights in every single Yakuza game. So where do we go from here? Well, I still need to no damage that secret fight in Kuruhio. So I might as well do that. Uh, the Ishin one, I mean, that won't really require a full-on commentary video. So I'll just I'll maybe upload a short video of that if I ever do get around to it. Uh, no more heroes. I mean, I might do the second game, but... Also, I might uh, rank all the boss, all the final boss fights in the series. I don't know. Maybe I'll get back to some old writing projects. I mean, from here, we can do a lot of things. So, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll see you then.